Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning-Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so excited that you have joined with us for online worship today on this first Sunday of Advent. If this is your first time in joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, we really hope that you will fill out our contact form. We hope everybody will fill out our contact form, but we really like you first time folks to do that with us today. Um, the, con the link to that is right in the comment section. There's also a QR code that you can click on and uh, there's a place there for you to put your contact information so that we can get in touch with you, connect with you, um, help support you in your life of faith. Uh, there is also a place in that contact form for you to put prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and prayer team. So everyone use that contact form today. When we uh, come together to worship online, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we covenant to participate, that means, well, we're gonna participate in what we're doing. This isn't just some kind of random video that you've come across today. We are worshiping together and worshiping God. So go ahead and pray when it's time to pray, stand up and sing when it's time to stand up and sing, light a candle when it's time to light a candle, and fully participate in what we're doing. And then we covenant together to be a blessing, and that means that that all of the ways that we are in worship together online today, the way we're in the comment section, the way that we are with people we may be gathered with where we are uh, participating, the way we're sending this out in the world, all of it is a blessing to everyone that is involved. Now today we do begin the season of Advent. Advent is the four weeks of preparation before Christmas. It is a season when Christians deepen their spiritual practices with things like prayer, silence, giving, and fasting in preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ, who brings final mercy and justice and peace, as well as a time of spiritual preparation for the celebrations of Christmas. Each week during online worship, we will light a candle on our Advent wreath to help us pray and remember, and you are welcome to join in this practice with us using your own Advent wreath candle or any candle that you might have. I invite you to get those things ready along with a lighter so that you can join in this special time in just a few minutes. Welcome to worship. Please join us in singing Emmanuel.
Hi, I'm Patty Ingram, and I'm a member of the church. I'm Sue Landry, and I also am a member of the church. We invite you to have your Advent wreath ready or have any candle with you and a lighter so that you may join us in lighting the candle of hope for Advent. As the nights grow longer and the days grow short, we look at these earthly signs in our Advent wreath. The light of the candles and of the green of the evergreen boughs to help us remember God's promise to our world. God promised through his prophets that the Messiah, the savior of the world, would come to redeem all of creation. Listen to the words of Isaiah the prophet who professes the message of hope in a coming savior. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The first candle that we light is the candle of hope. Advent is a time of waiting and of hoping. We wait for the day when we can again celebrate the birth of Jesus, and we hope in God's promise. The words of Isaiah speak about a Messiah who will bring light into the world. So as we light this candle, we are reminded that even today, we have a Messiah who can bring light into our dark and desperate world. And this, this gives us hope. Let us pray. Lord of hope, as we await your coming with great expectation, help us look for you in unexpected places at unexpected times even now. Let this candle remind us that while we wait, truly you are already here. Give us joy in the hope that comes with Christmas. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in our church community. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Good morning, I'm Nancy Gillespie. I sing, I sing in the choir, I play bells, I'm part of the Zephyr class, and peace be with you. Okay. Hi, I'm Bob Smith. I'm a greeter in the morning, and peace be with you. 
Hi, I'm Alan Griffey. I sing in the praise band. Peace be with you. It's time for small talk, everybody. So I want to especially encourage our children who may be with us in online worship to come in really close to your device or your screen so that you can see and hear everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries and her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in close right now. You don't want to miss it. It's time for small talk. Hi everybody, it's Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and his friend and helper Cohen. And we're really busy cleaning right now. This has probably happened in some of your houses this week too because we've got people, somebody's coming. You know, people come over, somebody's coming. Somebody really important is coming. Do you know who's coming, Laud? No? But you're cleaning anyway? Okay, well, the important person who's coming is Jesus. I know. This is the first Sunday of Advent. And so I'm cleaning. But it's not just like when you have relatives come to visit. We really don't have to clean our house for Jesus coming, even though he is the most important person that could come to your house, right? Yeah, exactly. But Advent just means it is getting ready, getting ready to celebrate Jesus coming. So this is week one. So get your Advent calendars ready because we're starting the countdown to Jesus's birth. It's time to celebrate. Have a great, wonderful first Sunday of Advent. And Laud's gonna continue cleaning. Yeah. Bye guys. Please join us in singing, Prepare the Way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, Good morning, my name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup and I am the Executive Director and Pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely and Douglas Avenue is my home church. I would like to share with you today's scripture reading. Our reading from the Bible today is from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God has to say for us through this scripture reading. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and all the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with the power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, 
This generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. May God bless our reading and understanding of the Bible reading we have heard today. Amen. You know what? Special revelation about me today. I am an old Girl Scout leader. When my daughters were younger, I had the honor of leading Girl Scout troops of all ages, daisies, brownies, juniors, and cadets. When the Girl Scouts are young, as daisies and brownies, we spend a lot of time learning and internalizing the basic tenets of Girl Scouting. That's found in the Girl Scout Promise, the Girl Scout Law, and the motto, which we share with Boy Scouts and other scouting programs. Now, the motto is two words long, uh, and you Scouts and probably everybody know them, so just join with me in saying them right now. Be prepared. Be prepared. When the Daisy and Brownie Girl Scouts, when uh, we are doing all of our activities, we, we do all kinds of things to help reinforce this motto with the girls, as, as you can well imagine. Be prepared gets wrapped up in almost everything that you do and anything that you get ready for, which is everything, right? Getting ready for a hike or a camping trip or a cooking project or some kind of other project or be prepared for your troop meeting or the activity that you're going to lead. Of course, the internalization of be prepared then leads to be prepared every day in all aspects of your life. That's the point. Be prepared for safety in your home. We would uh, work on this with the girls. Like, what do you and your family do if there's a house fire? Well, you need to be prepared and know how to exit and where it is that you're going to meet up. You don't want to be hunting around for what to do in the midst of that kind of emergency. Be prepared if there is a snowstorm or a power outage. Have your food ready and your flashlight ready. You don't want to be hunting around for your flashlight in the dark when you need a flashlight. Of course, be prepared also means be prepared for school with a positive attitude, willingness to learn, and your homework. Be prepared for your music lesson with a positive attitude and having practiced. Be prepared for your sports practice with a positive attitude and willingness to be coached and work with your team. Be prepared to do your, ch your chores for your home and uh, with your family. You get the idea. I think one of the most helpful and powerful takes on this motto, be prepared, that the Girl Scouts have is a partner slogan, which is this, do a good turn daily. Do a good turn daily. This means that each day the Scout will work to do something helpful for someone else or for their community or for the world. Do a good turn daily helps the Scout put in the kind of practice needed to be prepared for their family, friends, school, church, community, and world. As I've grown older, the wisdom of be prepared and do a good turn daily, they're not lost on me. Nor is there root in our faith practices of love and mercy and generosity. But I also know that wisdom about being prepared often comes to us through simple trial and error. For our scouts, it generally only takes one experience of camping in your tent in the rain to be prepared with appropriately placed rain tarps and flies. For those of us who have just celebrated Thanksgiving, it generally only takes one attempt at cooking a frozen turkey to remember to be prepared and get that bird out of the freezer well in advance of the big day and to look for the giblet packets on both ends of the bird. It usually only takes one experience of being accidentally left behind on a group mission trip to uh, having left your phone and your uh, purse in the car to remember that part of being prepared is making sure you have your purse and your phone with you at all times. Okay, that might have been me. When I was a young pastor and working as a student chaplain in the hospital, 
I prepared myself for my first experiences of going on rounds and visiting people on my assigned floor of the hospital. I was professionally dressed. I had my Bible. I had my mini book of worship, my small little tub of healing ointment. I was prepared, I thought. And I remember to this day, bravely walking into a patient's room in my first week with my preparations made to be greeted with, what the hell are you doing here? And that person bursting into tears with more outbursts at God and the world. Sure, I was prepared, but I had not prepared the most important thing for that particular trip into that hospital room. My heart was not ready. I was not prayed up and connected up in sufficiently to walk in grounded in love and open-heartedness and compassion and spirit. I had good, helpful, and powerful equipment in my hands, but I was not prepared in the way it most mattered. We are now here in a season of preparation in the church called Advent. It begins this weekend and it stretches for four weeks as a season of preparation before the Feast of Christmas. Advent is intended to be a season of prayer and fasting, to prepare one's heart and mind and soul for the coming of Jesus Christ again, bringing to full fruition the justice and mercy of God's kingdom, as well as preparing to remember and celebrate Jesus' first coming into the world as a baby at Christmas. This preparation of Advent certainly chafes and grates against our cultural preparations for Christmas. Our cultural preparations are all about buying and feasting and not at all about prayer and fasting. When we pay attention to our Bible reading for today that Margaret Ann shared with us, the call to preparation that Jesus speaks to us is very different than what might be on our minds right now as we look forward to Christmas. Jesus describes the, the dissolution of all things. The sun, moon, stars, earth, seas in an uproar. Everyone all over the world in a panic. The threat of doom overwhelming people fainting in fear and dread. Then the final coming of Jesus descending on a cloud with power and in glory. Be ready, Jesus tells us. Be prepared. But Jesus doesn't talk about building a bomb shelter or storing up canned goods or hoarding toilet paper and Christmas cookies or pre-buying Christmas presents so you don't miss out. Jesus says this, be on guard so that your hearts are not weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. The message translation of the Bible reads the same passage in this way. But be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by parties and drinking and shopping. Otherwise, that day is going to take you by complete surprise, spring on you suddenly like a trap, for it's going to come on everyone. This is a serious and sobering word Jesus speaks to us at the beginning of Advent, this season of preparation. Jesus confronts us with some stark reality about our world and our lives. As people who love and follow Jesus Christ, we believe that salvation has come in him, that God works powerfully through the Holy Spirit in our own lives and in the world, and we witness this and give thanks for this mighty work of God in the world. And we do our level best to live and work as God's people in the world and to be a part of bringing God's purposes to reality. But we know the world is still a mess, that our lives are too often in utter turmoil, and that all of it, the world, us, are still in need of redemption. We come to face to face with the reality of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection and his promise to come again. That salvation has already come in Jesus, but the fullness of salvation is not yet realized. We live in the in-between, the now and the not yet of Jesus' coming. 
We live in communities where people live in poverty and violence while others live in the privilege of not having to worry about those things every day with the ability to put them aside and, and do other things. We live in the reality of pain and suffering, our own and others. We live in the reality of racism and white privilege and the systems constructed upon them and the privilege to just put race aside when it gets uncomfortable or inconvenient or we just need a break. We live in the midst of ecological collapse and a lack of will to make the necessary changes to heal our world. We live in the midst of people acting out of hatred and fear and when we take a good look, find ourselves acting out in hatred and fear too. Here's the kicker, though. The true message of Advent of this season is not that everything is falling to pieces. It's also not that God is in heaven and all is right with the world, so please go about your business of shopping. Jesus' word to us is this. When heaven itself is spinning into oblivion, when every fixed star on the moral compass is wavering, when all hell is breaking loose on earth and in your life, redemption is drawing near. Help is on the way. Jesus' ultimate word to us is hope. Hope. Why? Because God is faithful to his promise to us in Jesus Christ. If the future were not the promise of Jesus Christ, but our own predictions of trends, despair would overwhelm us. If the future was not hinged on the redemption of God, then we would be lost in our own attempts at redemption through forced gaiety and shameful consumption. If the future were only up to us, then death would be the end to every human heart and every human hope. But that's not the message we receive from our gospel, nor is it the message of this season of Advent. The truth is that we can't take our own projections more seriously than God's promises to us. When we least expect it, when there may be no evidence for it, God's power comes into our lives, into our communities, into our world in ways that we can never predict or foresee. Jesus tells us we need to pay attention, to be alert, and to be ready, because he is coming. Just ask the prophet Jeremiah, looking for that righteous branch to come from the house of David. Just ask the prophet Isaiah, looking for the light that will be seen by all people. Just ask Elizabeth and Zechariah, the parents of John the Baptist, giving birth at their very old age to the one who prepares the way for the coming Messiah. Just ask Mary and Joseph, the parents of Jesus, giving birth to God's own son through the power of the Holy Spirit. Just ask the, the shepherds on the hillside, the disciples tending to their business, the Apostle Paul walking down that road to Damascus. Just ask the church given life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Just ask the desperately sick one receiving healing and new life now and in death and in life to come. Just ask the one contemplating suicide, receiving the grace of Jesus Christ and hope for tomorrow. Just ask the addicted taking one step of one hour of clean living that leads to the next and the next and the next. Just ask the despairing, feeling the love of God through the presence and love of just one or through the presence and love of a community. My friends, Jesus calls us to be prepared. That call is for you and it's for me. To stand on our feet with heads held high in powerful, hope-filled anticipation, ready to receive and act on what God's love and grace, mercy and justice have done, are doing and will do in the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please join us in singing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
join me now in a spirit of prayer. Please bow your heads. God of hope, on this new season of waiting, this holy season of Advent, our minds are filled with thoughts of your present coming into our sometimes darkened world. Open our hearts to your love that so can energize us during this special season. Help us to focus on what is important during this season, to avoid overscheduling, overspending, and overeating, but call us to you, draw us near to you during these coming weeks, to praying, to reading your word, to sharing our gifts, to doing with less so others can have more. Help us make this Advent season matter as we lift up your vision of what the world could be like if your light is limitless love were in our hearts all year long. Help us to slow down and prepare our hearts for newness that comes with your birth. There is so much, O oh God, to be thankful for during this time of year. In particular, we're so thankful for the blessings that we are free to enjoy for our family celebrations in these past weeks. We are thankful for the opportunity that we can gather together as a community of faith, both in person and online. O oh God, we also think today of the many who do not feel the joy of this season. We think of those who have recently lost a loved one, of those who have received bad news instead of good news, of those who are healing and recovering from COVID or any illness or recent medical procedure, and for those who feel alone, afraid and isolated, and those with mental health issues that seem to be more complicated during this time. We pray for those who struggle with addiction and for those with no home or those with too little food. Surround them, O oh God. Long expected Jesus, you have come and you are coming again. You are the hope of every longing heart. Together, O oh God, we want to lift our hearts and pray together the prayer that you taught us to pray. Please join with me in prayer as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Thank you for your dedicated support of the life-changing ministries here at DAUMC. Of course, if you've been following us for any amount of time, you know that we try to make it easy to give to DAUMC. We have our online giving portal at the website, a variety of automatic pay options, and you can always bring or send in your check directly to the church. No matter which way you manage your giving, we want to say thank you. During our Christmas season, there are plenty of ways to take the extra step to put your faith into action. In the narthex, you will find the Lydia Circle Angel Tree, supporting the Center for Child and Family Solutions. Take a tag and return your unwrapped item to the church by next Sunday. The tree can also be used to donate hats, scarves, mittens, and gloves for the students at Du Bois School. The Nurture Committee is coordinating this effort. Let's help make this Christmas warmer and happier for those in our community. Then on Saturday, December 11th, join us for the 31st annual DAUMC Cookie Walk. The sale will start at 8 a.m. and continue until all the cookies are gone. Warning, they will sell fast. Then on Sunday, December 12th, we hope you will join us for our instant interactive Christmas pageant, Just Add Kids. You will love this wonderful retelling of the Christmas story. Finally, another, another DAUMC tradition continues as Gwen Lewis once again sells her beautiful calendars as well as prints suitable for framing. This is the 10th year for Gwen's sales, which benefit the missions of the United Methodist Women. Um, and of course, be sure to read all of your e-news for many upcoming events. Thanks for being an active part of the DAUMC community. 
Join us as we sing, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. Thank you so much for joining in this time of worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this first Sunday of Advent. We hope that this whole experience has been powerful and hopeful and meaningful for you, that you will continue to join with us in online worship, or that you'll join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8, 15, and 1030 at the DAUMC campus. You are always welcome in all of these ways. And we love to be able to connect with you and to help you and to be a part of your life of faith and growing in that faith. So please use that contact form. Remember to use that today so that we can be in touch with you and remember that there's a place there for those prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. And now as you go from this place, go in the full hope of God, in the full hope of Jesus Christ, in the full hope that is brought in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and love and serve in all that you do. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. <laughs>